thing to keep in mind is that this is going to take such a long time and that the internal, the VM monitor goes to sleep. And so I came back and it was black and I just hit enter and I got the text back. So if that happens to you, you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, just hit a key and you'll get the console output back. All right. About after about an eternity, finally back. Let's see if we need to... or upgrade anything we shouldn't so it looks like it kept back linux generic headers generic which is just some kernel version stuff i think but either way let's just go ahead and reboot see what happens and it looks like it automatically went full screen full res and here we are in ubuntu gnome uh, login manager which i think is gdm3 all right so here we are at desktop cool so i'm actually going to go ahead and do is control alt t to open the terminal i'm gonna do sudo shut down halt now because i'm gonna give uh this thing more processing power I'm do that by going to system okay, it sure it has enough ram i'm gonna give it so it gave me a warning about some motherboard bios setting that i might not have enabled to give it two processors but um, let me just try starting up either way if you're going to be using your vm to like do actual GUI and development stuff, I definitely would recommend just giving as much processing power as you can because um, otherwise you're, you know, if you have two monitors, you know, your other monitor might just be for Adobe Acrobat PDF reader since you won't be able to have that on Ubuntu. So here we are in GNOME desktop. What I like to do first is go into the tweak tool. I like to change it to the Numix theme. And then I like to use the global dark theme. All right, so what we can do is control alt T to open a terminal. So I'm gonna install screen key in case it might be tough to see what I'm doing. All right, so super left, super is windows key. I like to use that and get uh, my terminal Actually, I like to full screen my terminal and I'll show you why. First thing we want to do is install a few things. GCC ARM non ABI, Git, Vim, or whichever other editor you prefer to use. Wait for those to download and install. And uh, while we're doing that, one thing that's nice about Ubuntu, and I know you can do this in Mac and Windows now, is the you can have work different workspaces and uh, you can like I can move this window down a workspace but another thing and I would recommend definitely at some point transitioning to a command line based editor a lot of useful editors are configurable and uh, so is even like your bash shell so I have a repository for like my vim configuration I use vim I also have some stuff that I like to add to my bash configuration I even have a script for like uh, when I'm doing a new system, just runs all the installs that I need and like sets up my Git repositories, clones them into my documents directory and uh, some of my uh, subversion repositories as well. This just go kind of goes to show what you're able to do when you switch to a Unix development environment. Like the whole entire operating system is the development environment. So what I'll do first is I'll do since I'm in my home directory, I'll do git clone whoops dot git clone that. I know it's getting starting to get a little bit distracting. So I made a script update vim local. It just literally copies the dot files into my home directory one. So if I do that, if I run update vim local, I added that print that tells me that's what happened. Uh, I also need to do append bash rc, which appends, appends the, the contents of this file to RC. 
that's kind of covered up right now, but yeah, so it appended it to my bash RC. And uh, Ubuntu gives you a bunch of bash RC stuff by default, which I think is usually pretty nice. Anyways, so here we are. I also, so now that I added that stuff to my bash RC, I need to do source bash RC. And now I have this alias command CLS, which runs clear and LS at the same time. I just think it's kind of nice. So I can go documents. So I have nothing in documents yet. I can do git clone. Uh, GitHub.com. Git. So we'll clone that repo. Uh, we'll run make. Uh, everything built just fine. So now I'll show you guys. This is how you get set up with the environment. So like when you're doing development, I can go into the common, I can open main. Well first let's, I have make clean set up to get rid of all those object files. So before you saw up here, I have cli.c, cli.o, a couple lines up, and now I just have cli.c. So that uh, make clean, what it did is it ran what you see after make clean, rmrf, the binary, the map, the elf, include proc, which is a symlink, which I'll get into later, and then find everything that's .o and get rid of it. So what's not, what I like about Vim is like I can open main, I can do control W V vertical, open a vertical tab, I can control W control W get over into this other file, capital G takes you to the bottom, gg takes you back to the top. I can change which files open if I do colon explore. And then uh, I can start to navigate around. And then, yeah, like, you know, it's, uh, if you're not familiar with Vim at all, it's what I, like to use to edit a lot of people like to use use it to edit a lot of people also use emacs um, i'm no expert at it but uh, i definitely think it's pretty efficient just the ability to have a terminal open now i have two tabs of files open just something that can be hard to do even with regular editors and what i just want to avoid as much as possible is having to take my hand and put it on the mouse if i can keep both my hands like on the home row and uh you know just do all my editing that way I can do it a lot faster. So in the next video, we will actually start doing some development and I'll show you how this project is set up.